It's a Thursday, July 22nd, and it's time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. Some visitors to Barbados have been presenting fake vaccination certificates and COVID-19 test results to avoid quarantine. That's according to the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, who however assured that those individuals have not been successful. Minister Bostick said officials at the Grantley Adams International Airport have been on alert for such fraudulent acts. Yes, we've been seeing this. We've been seeing false uh, test results as well and things coming from labs that we do not approve. And our team at the airport, they're very vigilant and they have, we have, they, they have um, demanded that persons coming in with, either with vaccine certificates or with test results that we do not recognize that they be tested and go through the normal procedures at the airport. So we know that this is an issue, but we are trusting our team at the airport to continue to do the very vigilant job that they're doing. Minister Bostick dismissed suggestions that visitors should shoulder the blame for the rise in COVID-19 cases in the country. The responsibility for the safety of this country when it comes to COVID rests with every single one of us doing the right things. Visitors will come. Because if they don't, then that's another set of problems that we don't want to see or to have because we've experienced that before. We are doing everything possible at our ports of entry and also by the COVID unit going around and doing what they have to do. Knock on wood, we've not seen any cases in restaurants and that sort of thing that people would want to identify with. And to be honest with you, before the week is out, we will give the exact figures, but the vast majority of the cases that we have right here in Barbados, right here in Barbados, COVID has been in Barbados for a long time and COVID has not left the country. What has changed in Barbados is the how people respond and react to the protocols. But yes, we as Ministry of Health, we have a responsibility also in relation to visitors and that's why the protocols in Barbados irrespective of where you come from if mask wearing is not mandatory or not even encouraged in your country it is in Barbados and you Meanwhile chief medical officer Dr Kenneth George has defended the government's decision to consider visitors with mixed vaccines fully vaccinated under the country's travel protocols This has been discussed at length within the EOC and the EOC's uh, major objective is always to maintain safety and security among the Barbadian population. We don't make decisions lightly. If you check the literature, there has been different, slightly differing views from WHO at different times with respect to mixture of vaccines. We personally reached out to the PAHO office and they gave us information that there are studies there that show that they are indeed efficacious. So when decisions are made, it is not made loosely and is made based on consultation with our partners and based on the evidence. In other news, government is being warned against making another move towards the Republic without a clear mandate from the people of Barbados. It's coming from the Democratic Labour Party's presidential hopeful, Reverend Guy Hewitt. He said Barbadians ought not to be bombarded with a rushed public awareness campaign on the matter at this time. I am in support of Barbados becoming a republic. I feel it is a rite of passage that we need to make as a nation. There's nothing, there's everything for us to benefit from having a Barbadian as our president and head of state. Effectively, it happens in terms of a governor general, but making that transition to a presidency and a republic, I, it's not a big deal, it is how we do it. And that is the problem. At this time, with all of the challenges we have as a nation, it is not the time to ask Bajans to think about anything more and do more. The other point I would say is, which was 
the point made by, by Sir Henry Ford, his thinking along the current model that is being considered by the advisory team is that if you're going to do this, you need a referendum. So, so if you follow the model that the government seems to be ready to, it is demanding that they pursue a referendum. But my position is we can make a journey to republicanism, but we just need the time to do it properly. Opposition Senator Caswell Franklin is of the view that the unemployment figures being reported in the country are not accurate. Speaking on the Remote Employment Amendment Bill 2021 in the Senate on Wednesday, Franklin said despite lower unemployment figures being reported in sections of the media, he strongly believed that it was well over 30%. We have unemployment over 30 percent in Barbados. How many people tell you in the newspapers or whatever? It's over 30 percent. Because when you look at the amount of people who went home from tourism, unless tourism industry is employing two or three percent of the workforce in Barbados, that's the only way we can have such low numbers in unemployment. We had a massive layoff in the pub in the, in the um, tourism sector so these our numbers cannot be this low i don't care anybody tell me unless you are saying well they were off for too long so they're not looking for jobs so we're not counting them and then we have people in the in barbados who are getting two days a week so even if it is not unemployment it is underemployment two days a week three days a week they're working for 20 hours 24 hours in, a, in an effort not to pay them servants pay because if you're working for less than half your week's wages your normal week's wages you can claim servants and also claim unemployment benefits as well there's regional and international news after this short break From our regional neighbors now, Belize is said to be battling its third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic with over 300 active cases on record. And as a result, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Michelle Shabat, says the country's curfew hours will be extended as of Monday, July 26th. We are taking additional measures. Um, I want to put the whole country on notice that starting on Monday, as a result of the increase in numbers that we have seen, as a result of the fact that we are not observing the public health measures which are intended to curb the numbers, we are going to be uh, looking at a new time frame for the curfew. As of Monday, curfew will begin across the country from 9 o'clock and it's going to go on to 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so that's an additional measure we're taking into place throughout the country. We're, we're looking at the villages where we have increasing numbers and a lot of the index cases are arising from places of worship. We have asked before, um, we've asked the churches to please control the numbers, to please make sure that their members are observing the public health measures. It has not been happening and so as of Monday we will also be closing down those places of worship in these villages where we have expanding numbers. And this, again, is rarely to safeguard the health of the Belizean people. It costs the government of Belize, it costs the taxpayers of Belize millions of dollars. And so we've implemented the public health measures. We've seen that people have fallen back on it. They're not observing them. And as a consequence, we're seeing an increase in numbers. And so we must tighten the rope a little bit to safeguard everyone. And finally, on the international scene, a hundred people who were kidnapped from a village in northern Nigeria have been released after spending over a month in captivity. 
More from Reuters TV. Nigerian police have secured the release of 100 captives, including women, children, and nursing mothers, who were abducted from their village over a month ago. A police spokesman on Wednesday said they were kidnapped from Manawa village in the country's northwest. We are very happy to reunite with our brothers and sisters with their children who have been in captivity for over 42 days in the hands of some recalcitrant uh, bandits. Nigeria is battling an increase in armed robberies and kidnappings for ransom. Thinly deployed security forces have struggled to contain the rise of armed gangs, commonly referred to as bandits. While Nigeria has faced a decade of insecurity, including attacks by Islamist militants, including Islamic State's allies Boko Haram, the current wave of kidnappings is primarily financially motivated. A Lagos-based consultancy firm, SBM Intelligence, estimates that kidnappers took over 2,300 people across Nigeria in the first half of this year demanding ransoms totaling $24 million. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.